Hi, everybody, and happy Monday. Welcome back to the Extraordinary Talk Show. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. And here we are, Monday, back to work, back to everything that I want to share with you about the world and the universe. Today, I want to talk to you about focus and intention. If you are trying to improve your life in any way, improve yourself in any way, in order to effectively do that, you must set the intention of what it is that you're trying to change and create a focus whereby to achieve that change. Now, that doesn't mean that every time you make a change that you set an intention, but you might set more of an intention than you realize that you are. And if you don't set an intention, then your change or whatever that's going to happen to you might fall the other direction. The change might happen, but it might not go where you want it to if you have not created the intention and followed some focus to get there. Quick story. Last year, I had a cherry tree in my backyard. It was a cute little cherry tree. It wasn't huge, but it was quite darling. And I kept looking at it thinking, I wonder when it's going to have cherries. Shouldn't it be having cherries by now? I wonder when it's going to have cherries. And I finally one day went out to check it. And I looked all around and I noticed there were a couple little red spots peeking through the leaves. But then I kind of bent down and looked underneath. And when I looked at the underside of the tree, there were hundreds, if not thousands of cherries hanging right there, red and ripe and ready to be picked. But the thing was, from the perspective I was looking at, I couldn't see them. It wasn't even until I got close that I could see some little sparks of red showing up underneath the leaves. And it wasn't until I changed my perspective entirely that I was able to see the fruit that was ready to be harvested. And this is a pretty great metaphor. We have so many wonderful things around us that we actually have access to in our lives, but we can't see them. So we don't realize that they're there. Let's talk about the reticular activating system. We've talked about this before. Here's a refresher. The reticular activating system is the filter that your brain uses to kind of shine a spotlight on what it thinks that you want to be paying attention to. What I mean by that is at any given second, while you're awake, your brain is actually absorbing about 100 million bits of information per second. But you don't have the capacity to focus on 100 million bits of information per second. You only have the ability to focus on 40 to 60 bits of information per second. That's a very, very, very small percentage of what you actually have access to. So you have a filter that your brain uses called the reticular activating system that chooses for you what 60, 40 to 60 things it's going to shine a spotlight on per second for you to pay attention to. Let me give you a good example of this. At this moment, can you feel the seat that you're sitting in? Or if you're not sitting, perhaps the shoes that your feet are in? Or if you're barefoot, perhaps the ground that your feet is on? Now, were you aware of that feeling and that sensation 10 seconds ago? Unless you have a reason why you were, you probably weren't. You probably weren't thinking about how your legs and butt felt in that chair. You probably didn't occur to you to think about how your feet feel inside your shoes until I said something. But when I said something, I brought attention to those things. And by doing that, I have now triggered your reticular activating system for you to pay attention to the seat that you're sitting in or the shoes that you're wearing. Things that you could feel all along, but that your reticular activating system wasn't focused on and wasn't sending your conscious brain signals about. So what does this mean as when you look at a cherry tree or when you're looking for those cherries and for the fruit that's ready to be harvested. What I said a minute ago is that the blessings that you're wanting, that you're looking for in your life are all around you constantly, but you have a perspective that does not allow you to see those things. The joy, the bounty, the abundance, and the opportunity are all around you. The universe wants you to have good things. There's a really good chance that the main reason that you don't have the good things in your life that you think you 
want is simply because you don't believe you deserve them. And my friends, I want to help you change your thoughts, change your thinking to begin to believe that you do believe you do deserve good things and to believe that the universe wants you to have good things. Now, if you're listening to me right now and you're kind of blowing me off a little bit, like, yeah, right, it's probably because you've had the thought and the belief in you for so long that you don't deserve good things that your reticular activating system has narrowed completely down to only the things that you believe you deserve. Your reticular activating system will show you what it thinks you want to see. But you have to set the intention and tell your reticular activating system what things you want to see. If you are looking for proof that you deserve good things, you have to start looking for proof that you deserve good things. You have to set your focus. And by setting your focus, trigger your reticular activating system to look for those things for you. Specifically, let's work with this phrase, I don't deserve good things. You probably believe that on some level or another. There are millionaires and billionaires in the world who don't believe that they deserve good things. But what they see as good things is different from what you see as good things. Because you might see a million dollars as a good thing and have an internal belief that you don't actually deserve that. Whereas a millionaire might have a million dollars that he doesn't appreciate as much as you might, perhaps, but he doesn't have the happiness and joy in his life. And that's what he sees as a good thing that he doesn't deserve. So the good things that you deserve, the definition of those things is going to be very different for each person who is trying to decide what it is that they want in the world. The good things that you want are going to be very different from the good things that another person wants. So even though you might have many, many good things, you might not believe that you deserve good things because you're not acknowledging the good things in your life as being that good. So the very first thing that you need to do to trigger your reticular activating system to start focusing on good things is to begin to look for those things on your own, not to be reminded by when they slip through the filter of your brain, but take an active intention to find the good things in your life. This comes to gratitude journaling or perhaps meditation or talking about it with a friend, whichever way works the best for you, maybe all of them, to pay attention to and focus on the good things in your life. I guarantee you, if you sat down and took a piece of paper, you could fill up the paper with good things in your life. It could be good things that you have currently right now. It could be good things that you had in the past that blessed you. But you could easily go back and write down at least one page of good things in your life. This is another reason, my friends, why gratitude is so important. Gratitude, when you experience gratitude, when you feel gratitude inside your body, it does a number of things. For one thing, gratitude is a very high vibration feeling and emotion. And the more you feel positive, high vibration feelings and emotions like gratitude and love, the higher your personal vibration is going to be. You know that it's so much better to be in a room with someone who is in a good mood, positive and grateful than to be in a room with someone who is cranky and upset and pointing out all the negative things, right? There is a literal difference in the energy vibration between those two people. So decide for yourself which one of those two people you want to be and set an intention for that. Another thing that gratitude does, other than simply raising your vibration, is it brings that spotlight of focus, your reticular activating system, to those things. And when you point out all of the things that you're grateful for, your reticular activating system will start reminding you of other good things, other blessings in your life that you should also be grateful for. One way, another way that the reticular activating system works in this manner is, have you ever perhaps looked at buying a new car or bought a new car? And this happened, for example, with me a couple of years ago when I bought my son a car. I bought him a little orange hatchback. 
And I had not noticed before that how many orange hatchbacks are on the road. They had basically been invisible to me. But once I purchased an orange hatchback and had it sitting in my driveway, all of a sudden I started seeing orange hatchbacks everywhere. Because I put that into my life, into my focus, my reticular activating system started going, oh, look, there's another one and another one and another one and another one. This works the same thing with things that you are grateful for. When you are grateful for something, your reticular activating system will point out more of those things. Now, the opposite of that is true too. If you look around all day and complain and complain about all of the things that are wrong in your life, guess what your reticular activating system is going to show you more of? It's going to show you more of those things that are wrong in your life. Now, what I believe, and you may not, but that's okay. You don't have to. Just listen to me on this, is all of the good things are there and opportunities for even better things are there. But if you're focusing on the stuff that you don't like, the stuff that's making you unhappy, that's what your reticular activating system is going to show you more of. And pretty soon you're going to believe that that's really all you have. And when you believe that that's really all you have, you stop looking for the better things. And my friends, that's pretty sad. That's actually pretty depressing. And then it creates a downward spiral because all you can see is sadness and hopelessness. Even though the blessings are there and opportunities for more blessings are there. Just like when I was looking at the cherry tree and saying, there's no cherries, there's no cherries. I couldn't see any cherries. When I decided to look for the cherries, to focus on the cherries, I found them. And I didn't just find a few, I found hundreds. But I had to change the perspective that I was looking from. So if you want to fill your life with the good things, first of all, many, many, many of them are already there. By changing your focus, the spotlight that your reticular activating system is shining onto, you will become more aware of the good things that are in your life that maybe you didn't notice before. And because of the way that the law of attraction works, not only will you see the things that are in your life already that you just didn't notice before, but the law of attraction will bring you more of those things and will bring you more opportunities for those things. So instead, you can go in an upward spiral where things get better and better and better. The idea is focus your reticular activating system on the things that you want. Set your intention to change your belief that you don't deserve good things to a belief that you do deserve good things. Now, if you're like many, many, many people, the negative thoughts, the things that you repeat to yourself go over and over in your head every single day. We have about the same 40 to 60,000 thoughts every single day that we had yesterday and the day before and the year before, unless we make an active intention to change those thoughts. So if you think that you're worthless and don't deserve good things, you probably thought that yesterday and last year and five years ago and maybe even 10 years ago. Well, here's, here's the thing, my friend. It is time for you to adopt a better thought. It is time for you to first change your intention to see better things. Second, set your reticular activating system to recognize better things. Third, to trust the law of attraction to bring you better things. And in doing that, one of the things that you've got to do is change that thought. If you have that negative thought in your head, the same one that's been there for years, it's going to take a little bit of work to change that. And you can't just go from, gosh, I really don't believe I deserve good things, to, dang it, Della said I do, so I deserve good things. And I would love for you to take my word on those things, but I don't expect you to because like I say all the time, I'm not trying to tell you what to think. I'm trying to get you to think for yourself. You have to make a gentle change in your thinking. You can, it is possible to change your thoughts immediately, but that usually takes a pretty big emotional hit or even a pretty large physical hit in order to release the chemicals that allow your brain to rewrite neurons. There are some that can do it rapidly, 
But for most of us, that's not how it works. For most of us, most of the time, we have to do a step-by-step daily change. You are probably not going to get from, I don't deserve good things to, I do deserve good things in a day. Give yourself some patience. Give yourself a little bit of forgiveness that it's okay if it takes more than a day or more than a month or more than a year to fully completely make that change. Because if you've been making, having that same thought for 10 or 20 years, it's going to take you a while to turn that around. Don't feel bad about that, but just know you are going to turn it around. Set your intention to believe that you believe better, that you deserve better, and that you will have better. The first step to that, that I recommend, first is, like I said, to acknowledge the good things that you have, be grateful for them, look for more great things, and be grateful for them as they come. And as the law of attraction sends you even more things, continue to be grateful for those things and continue to look for those things because when they start showing up, it gets really exciting. And then you are even more excited to watch and pay attention and your reticular activating system is even more alert to the really great things that are there and that are coming to you. Here's a hack. And I shared this hack with you a few weeks ago. Instead of completely flipping from I don't deserve good things to I do deserve good things, start in the middle asking the question. You don't have to find the answer for this, by the way. You do not need to answer this question. Ask the question of God and of the universe Why do I deserve good things? You might want to write that down and put it on your mirror. Ask that same question in many different ways. Why is it that good things happen to me? Why is it that I deserve good things? Think of the specific things that you want. For example, if you want, if you're really looking for a newer, better car, why is it that I deserve a better car? Why are these things going to happen to me? Ask the question why and find as many different variations of that question as you can come up with. Why do I deserve for this to happen? Why is the universe going to go out of its way to bring these things to me? And as you begin simply asking the question why, you manage to make your reticular activating system answer those questions for you your reticular activating system is going to find answers to that question and show you, this is why you deserve good things. This is why good things can happen to you. And this is how good things are going to happen to you. And as you see those things come into place, keep asking the questions. Don't stop asking the questions. And as you do that, you will notice more and more good things happening. And if you're paying attention, you'll actually notice the shift of the focus of your reticular activating system from the negativity and the disbelief to the positivity, to the recognition of the great things that are happening around you and to an expectation that more of those things are going to happen. This is a really special thing. This is a hack, guys. I dare you to try it. And it can be about that or it can be about many, many other things. If you want something better in your life, ask the universe Why do I deserve that? Why is that coming to me? How is that going to come to me? And the trick of this is if you think, I, if you've had the thought for a long time that you don't deserve good things, like I said, it's going to take a lot to change your mind completely to the other side to where you actually believe the opposite of that by asking these questions and not trying to answer them yourself, but by allowing your reticular activating system to show you the answers and by allowing the universe itself to show you the answers, you can slowly change that belief. And you can use that hack for any belief. It doesn't just have to be that. Any belief that you want to change about yourself, you can use that hack of asking the question why that should be the case in order to change how your mind looks at it what your mind believes about you and about that thing. We come now to intentions. And I've talked about intentions several times already that you must have the correct intention in order to really make a change. If you think, huh, it'd be good to do that, but I probably can't, then you've already kind of sunk. Do you remember the famous phrase that says, and it might have been Will Rogers, that says, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. 
that goes right along with it. So if you want to have better things, see better things, deserve better things, have a better life, you have to believe that you deserve those things. And if you don't believe that you deserve those things, the first thing you want to do is set an intention to change your belief. Intention is one thing that Oprah Winfrey actually loves to talk about. She completely believes in the power of intention. And one thing that she started doing when she first learned about intention 20, 30 years ago was she would ask all of her staff anytime they brought an idea for a new show or a different type of show, she would ask them, what is your intention from this show? What is it that you expect to happen from this? And if they said, uh, I don't know, that wasn't good enough. She would say, okay, well, it might be a good idea for a show, but you go back and you figure out what your intention for this show is. And then we'll talk more about doing the show. What outcome do you want to come out of this show? And for you, you can use a similar trick Asking yourself anytime you do something or anytime you're about to do something, what do I hope is going to come out of this? What is my intention for this action? One of my favorite quotes from Dwight in the office is, anytime I'm about to do a thing, I ask myself, would an idiot do that thing? And if the answer is no, I do not do that thing. Well, going a little bit of a different direction. Ask yourself, what's the outcome of this thing? If I'm going to do this thing, what is the purpose of it? What is the outcome of it? What do I want to have happen here? Ask yourself that question before you do anything new. Before, If you're asking yourself, should I do this or should I not do this? Ask yourself, what is the outcome? What is my intended outcome? What do I hope is going to happen here? For example, if you aren't sure whether or not you should post your status on Instagram, ask yourself, what's my intention for this? Is my intention that people are going to give me likes and I'll feel good? Is my intention that I'll have this saved in my memories and I can come back and look at it later? If you're making a comment on one of those things, what is the intention of your comment? Is it to praise or acknowledge someone else? Is it to argue with somebody else? And if that's the case, is that going to have the outcome that you intend for it to have? I challenge you to set greater intentions before you walk into work. And I do this every day before I get to work. Before I walk into work, I set my intention for how my night is going to go, how my day at work is going to go. I think about specific things. I want this person to be happy. I want this person to have relief. I want to be able to share love with the people around me in these ways. And because I'm doing that, I expect and have the intention that my entire shift is going to go smooth, that I will have perfect timing, and that even if things go wrong, I will have the intuition knowing how to handle those things, and I will have the perfect timing that I will be able to handle those things as they come to me rather than having all of them come together at the same time and making it really hard. Guys, I'm not kidding you. When I set those intentions before I go to work, before I walk in the doors to work, every shift goes better. And don't just take that from me. I wish you had the opportunity to speak to the people that I work with and around because many of them come back to me and say, you know, there's something different when you work. And it's very difficult for me to even explain what that is other than that One of my greatest intentions at work, at home, anywhere I am, is to share and teach love in the best way that I'm able. And my friends, if that's your intention, you cannot go wrong. My second intention is for everything to go well. And in my mind, I have some ideas and pictures of what that looks like. In your mind, your day at home, your day at work, the activities that you take part in are all going to be a little bit different, obviously, than what my day at work looks like. But consider some of the things that you maybe struggle with a little bit. And instead of saying, well, that's not going to happen, set the intention by focusing on what you would like to have happen instead. And it's miraculous when you set your intention. By setting your intention, by the way, you are triggering your reticular activating system to look for those things that are going to make evidence of that. 
And as you see evidence of that, the law of attraction will bring you more of those things. In a way, it's quite simple, but the actual practice of it might be a little bit more difficult. I challenge you, try these things, set your intentions, and look for the best possible outcomes. And my friends, I guarantee you will find them. Again, like I said earlier, I am not trying to tell you what to think, but I am trying to get you to think for yourself. And I'm Della with The Extraordinary Talk Show. I love you. Thank you so much. You've been listening to The Extraordinary Talk Show with Della Hill. Search YouTube and Facebook, Spotify, or Podbean for video and podcasts of this show. Or go to RadioStGeorge.com. We'll see you next week for another edition of The Extraordinary Talk Show.